Hey there and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This is the third video in the series of videos that talks about how to use the data that you collect from a Google form, download it as Excel onto your computer, and do some statistical analysis. Our last video looked at using pivot tables, just briefly, and this video is going to look at hypothesis testing using some t-tests. Now, from our last video, we discovered that there were some interesting differences, say, in final exam scores and also in project scores for the different genders. And I might be curious to see if those differences are actually statistically significant. And so to do that, what I'd like to do is grab some of the data from here, move it to another location in my Excel document, and then run a t-test on that data to see if there are some significant differences. So what I'm going to do, since I know that I want to look at final exam score and gender, is I'm going to grab this portion of the table, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and then I'm going to hit Control c to copy it. I don't want to delete it, I just want a copy of it. And then I'm just going to scroll down in my Excel doc until I have a nice blank area, and I'm going to hit Control v and paste it back. Now I want to look at final exam uh, scores for females and I want to look at final exam scores for males. And if I want to show somebody else this data as well or the results, I want it to look more organized. So what I'm actually going to do here is grab all the females which are already in sorted order. But if they were not in sorted order, you could click here and you can hit data and you can choose to sort and I would actually want to highlight this entire area if I wanted to sort. So let's look at what that looks like. Right now I'm sorted from A to Z, so I'll just sort the other way, which will put males on top. So I want to make sure that my data is sorted and I choose all of it at once if I am doing a sorting. All right, so I definitely want to compare male final exam scores. I'm going to hit Control X, so I'm going to cut that box out and I'm going to place it down here at the bottom. And there's so many ways to do this. It's really up to you how you want to organize. But when I do specific analysis and I'm creating a report that someone else is going to view, for example, I like to make it very clear to them what I was looking at. From here, maybe I'd like to get rid of this because I'm not going to be looking at this. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to get rid of those cells. And I'm going to scooch this over so that it's right next to my males. And so now I have a nice little table that's concise, which gives me just the final exam scores for my male students. Now I'm going to go back up to that same area. I'm going to do the same thing for females. I'm going to grab this whole thing and hit Control X. And again, there's so many ways that you can do this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here, Control V. And I know that this is my gender and this is my score. I'm going to get rid of this center area here because I don't need it. I have more females than males, but that doesn't matter for an independent samples t-test, which is what we are going to run. So let's move that out of the way, and now we're all set. And if I want to, I can go ahead and put that here, put this here, just so that I have uh, a gauge on it, or if I'm going to copy this into a PowerPoint guide, it's nice and organized. Alright, so how do I run a t-test in Excel? I know I have this now separated into two independent groups. These are the final exam scores for my male students. And let's go ahead and color those. These are the final exam scores for my female students. And so now I can compare just those two sets of scores knowing that I've separated the data out. To run a t-test in Excel, I can click on any blank cell and choose the equal sign. Then I can start with the letter T and everything that starts with T in Excel will pop up. And this is kind of the fast way to do this. I don't have to do it that way. I can also click on a blank cell. I can choose insert. Actually, oh, that's right, they've moved it. I can choose formulas, more formulas, statistical, and then I can search down this grouping all the way down to the T's if I'm looking for the t-test here. And this is, of course, the long way to do this. Here's my t-test. So if I choose the t-test, it's going to ask me, okay, what's the first array or the first set of data that you're comparing? 
the first set, and I don't want to include the word final exam score, just the numbers, just the data, these are my male final exam scores. The second set, and let me scooch this out of the way so we can see it better, is going to be my female scores. See how it did that to me? It does that. Don't let it disturb you. Let's put the male scores back. So let's get rid of that. Recopy that over. Now I want to do the female scores, so I'll just move this down so I can get to them. I want to click next to Array 2 and then highlight all the female scores. And then they will be here. How many tails do I want my test to have? Normally when I do a t-test, I run a two-tailed t-test because it's best not to make prejudice assumptions about whether you believe one is going to be greater than the other. A two-tailed test is nice because it'll tell you whether there's a significant difference on one side or the other. Of course, you can run a one-tailed test just as easily by typing a one in there. Now, the type of test that I want is actually going to be a two-sample equal variance test. And so that's type two. And you might be wondering, well, how do I know that the variance is equal? I only know because I'm familiar with variations on exam scores. But if you wanted to be certain that the variance was equal, you'd have to run an F test. And that's a little bit advanced to this video. So generally you can assume in, in a case like this where it's final exam scores in both situations that you have equal variances. And so that's also a two. And then I can click OK. When I do that, what it gives me is the p-value. So this result that it produces right here is the p-value for the t-test. And if our p-value, if our p-value is less than our chosen alpha value, then we have a significant result. In this case, that's absolutely true because our value is very nearly zero. It's very tiny. So we're going to just round it down to zero. And most people choose an alpha value of 0.05. You don't have to. You can choose it to be as strict or as flexible as you like. 0.05 is a common alpha value. So in this case, our p-value is much less than 0.05 or our alpha value. And so we conclude that we do have a significant difference statistically between the final exam scores for our male students and the final exam scores for our female students. So again, just to review in Excel, running a t-test is very straightforward. You can come anywhere that's blank. The fast method is to type in an equal sign and the letter T. Scroll down until you see t-test. If you ever forget what each of these represents, you can also click on the t-test itself and it will show you how to run the t-test, what each thing represents, and some hints and examples as to how to run the test. In our case, array 1 was our males. You can select it this way, click comma, choose array 2, which is our females, comma. It's a two-tailed test, equal variances, parenthesis, enter. And again, we get the same exact value. So that's how to run an independent samples t-test to check to see if two of your population means are significantly different, which in this case they are. For our next how-to video, we are going to look at a paired data t-test. So thanks for joining me.